Spent the whole weekend getting shit on by the meme tards. All right, it's another week. We're back. Simply Bitcoin. We're breaking down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, the meme review, software releases, and the websites by plebs or plebs. Drop us a like, subscribe. You know where we're going. We're checking out the numbers. Let's do this. At the time of this recording, the block height is 689,068. The Bitcoin price, 34,450. Chain rewrite days, 978. Total public lightning capacity, 1,630.96. Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 5.56%. Sats per dollar, 2,903. We're below 3K. Below 3K. Okay. That's a good thing. Dude, honestly, bro. Make it. Honestly, dude. After this China, that they actually banned Bitcoin, most of it. They actually banned most of it. And the fact that we're sitting pretty at 34K blows my mind. And it's just another example, bro. You can't kill the honey badger, baby. Okay, we're not going to... I, I always have to, I, 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 it, we suck because we have to preface this with, we're not going to speculate, but we're going to speculate, okay? <laughs> I think that this, the, the whole China FUD was baked into the, was, was, was baked into the current price. That, okay. that's my, that's my opinion. I mean, we may, again, we may slip lower. I'm not going to speculate that we're not going to go lower. I don't care if we go low. If we go lower, I'm just going to stack with what I got at that time. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I, I, I feel like this was already, you know, like uh, it was already priced in. Okay, fair enough. I, I think that's the having fair. is not priced in, but this was priced in. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that's a fair I think that's a fair assessment. I I I, I would agree with that. But it, it's we'll see. But hey, like like you said earlier, Phil, we don't speculate on this show. We just tell you stack stat stack stack blah, blah, blah. stack sats. <laughs> can't even tell you that stack <laughs> sats. Don't trade. Just stack sats. I can't stack even say them. it. Just stack them. You don't have to worry. Just stack and hodl. That's that's what simply Bitcoin's all about. That's what you should be doing. Don't trade. You'll lose money. And don't leverage. That's a bad idea too. But anyways, Phil, it's time for it. the daily fail. All right, everyone. Yeah, that's right. We're we're going back to greed love because because it, it developed right over over the weekend. He's started to get some love, some love from the <laughs> from the fellow shit coining circus morons. All right, here we go. So Bitcoin is unity. Tweeted out, holy shit! Look who's backing breed love. Indeed. <laughs> let's take a let's take a peek. <laughs> Nice, nice. Nothing like the official real vision shitcoin scammer himself. Bitcoin's going to eat the world, but I kind of need to sell subscriptions, so I need you to buy these shitcoins. Yeah, so here's his support. Well written, well done. Eric Voorhees. Came for the dunk on maximalism, stayed for the elegant discourse and philosophical reasoning. So well expressed. Robert, thank you for writing this and for the independent thinking, which is so core to Bitcoin's ascent. I mean, th this, I like, he's so full of crap. Okay, anyways, now we're going to hear actual voices of reason, not people that are just, you know, pumping this guy's ego because this helps. Th what this does is validate their shitcoining use case, right? Yes. Oh, I feel better about myself. This other guy sucks just like me. Okay, anyways, so we're going to move on to the, uh, to the next one, which is a response from... They're GG. <laughs> Anyways, great Bitcoiner. Shout out to him. Wrote the 21 Hell lesson yeah. too. Hell Here yeah, we go. Yeah. Okay. I can't stop laughing. Why can't he stop laughing? Let's take a peek. So here we go. He, he gave, you know, he kind of outlined some stuff. But we're just going to do what, what's on the highlighted text here. To assure myself that my reasoning is principle-based and not profit-driven. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So why even tweet it out? Why even tweet out that you're doing research into this shitcoin? Interesting. Oh, what? You, I, I don't understand what just happened. Profit wasn't a motive, but of course it was a. Mo oh gosh, this is just this is just brutal, right? You know, it, it's it's so tough. You know, like my how the mighty have fallen. Like that that is just. Come on, man. You wrote such fantastic stuff about Bitcoin, and now this is just such clown shit. Anyways, look. He's getting support from the wrong people. That, to me, right there is a red flag. Um, our BitClout is the real Breedlove account, I think. So. <laughs> 
And that's where I'm going to end it. Nico, uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, this garbage? Dude, phenomenal <laughs> reporting. Like always, Phil just keeps taking it up, man. Awesome. And listen, when you have Eric Voorhees and Raul taking your side, okay, that is not a good thing. <laughs> And I just want to point out both of them have blue check marks. So I'm sure Robert is on the way to get his, right? Uh, the official establishment approval. Um, and uh, it's just so funny, dude. But I mean, like, look, other than the clear contradictions and, you know, just shit coinery in general, I just find it fascinating how much we get under their skin with our toxicity. Like, it clearly, uh, like, it clearly makes them question, like... We're living, what I'm trying to say, Phil, is like we're living rent-free in their head. You know, it bothers them. Oh, we're, yeah. not, we're not saying anything. We're not attacking them physically. We're not saying, all we're doing is just typing words on Twitter and look how they're reacting. It's insane. <laughs> like, are you are you kidding me? No, but still, right? At the end of the, like, again, why, why, why the weird mental gymnastics? Why the pretending... Why, why the pretending and then all of a sudden, oh, well, it's it's the Bitcoin maximalists that are you're making me look like an idiot or it's it's their fault or it's it's this tyrannical crowd think. It's, it's like, wait a second, though. Like, this is a known scam. You totally I, I man, that's my only point. I Because to me, that's the only point you need. It, it, it you is. did not have to tell anyone that you were looking into this garbage. And then if you wanted to, you could have put out a report, but you didn't have to shill it to people. And then to... To, I'm sorry, but to play these, you know, the, the mental gymnastics of then saying that, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give all the proceeds to the Bitcoin core devs. So, so you think that validates the action of scamming people and getting them to sign up to your BitCloud profile? I mean, ah, uh, come on, this is not right. He's like, that's not validation. I don't care if you're doing something good with the money. And anyways, who's really going to know? But it's not good because he's he's essentially convincing people to sell their precious Bitcoin for Bitcoin. I don't. I can't even imagine doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like that 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 and that's the issue. I think you nail you, you nailed it on the head, Phil. The problem is right that it, it that the problem isn't that Robert was looking at Breedlove. I mean, sorry, <laughs> that Robert was was looking at Bitclout, right? The problem was. Is that by by saying that on Twitter with his public profile with that many followers, he's legitimizing it. Yes. He's making it legit, right? With all his writings and the Michael Saylor series, as soon as this guy just shills this, all the noobs are like, oh, Bitcoin, BitCloud's legit now, right? But in reality, I doubt Robert thinks it's legit himself. He just wants the cha-ching, you know? Yep. So, man... But there you go. Another example yep. of why you shouldn't have any heroes in Bitcoin. Same thing happened with Andreas, bro. And that guy was the one that orange pilled me. Same mm -hmm. took the shitcoin path. Yep. Same thing. And then he started talking crap about maximalism. Same, you know, same thing. Yep. And uh, Robert, congratulations on the blue check mark. Uh, but anyways, okay. Phil, it's time for it. The Daily Meme Review. All right, everybody. The meme for today is brought to us by Joe Han D. Diggerjik. I'm sorry, guys. I can't the, read. But the Greek? Yeah. You know who you are. Shout out to you, man. You're a fellow plebe. Let's check out this meme. And thanks for the tag. We really appreciate that. Yeah. By the way. Uh, check out check out the meme. Bitcoin. Naim Bukele. Fiat Monetary. <laughs> very, very good. Bra Bravo, Johan. Awesome, awesome mm -hmm. meme. And because it was an awesome meme, I'm going to give it my favorite hot sauce, which really isn't hot sauce. It's called crystal sauce, okay? But check it out. It's not spicy, but it has all the good tastes of hot sauce. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So it's not spicy, but it has the taste of hot sauce. It's like committing to hot sauce. No, you're without, not. But without having to get the hotness. Who has hot sauce without heat? Dude. Crystal sauce. That's who. Crystal sauce. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll try it. I like the score, though. I like the score. Very inventive. Very inventive. I like it. You get an E for effort on that one. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, love the meme. Totally, you know, great explanation. And for that, I am going to give it a very useful 
USB extension cable. Oh, right. bro, that is the mo- one of the most useful cables. I mean, who the hell really has extra ones with this tip? It's, right? Hold on, let me zoom I, out so you can I, see the tip. That's the old one. That's the that's exactly. the fire wire doing. Oh my god. Well, it's, it's you know what? It's just the it's the it's like the old USB ports mm-hmm. that everyone used to use, and like every once in a while you need one of these. So yeah, very dude. useful, just like that meme. Wow, wow, wow. Incredible scores. Crystal sauce, USB extender for Johan. Awesome meme, bro. Awesome, awesome meme. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily News, sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. All right, everybody. The news for today. Before I get to the news, I just want to make fun of this ad real quick. World Gold Council. See how your investment portfolio could benefit from gold. (laughs) <laughs> okay anyways carried away this is the news okay bitcoin mining hash rate hits new 13th month low that <laughs> that's a lot guys uh check out the article the total hash rate on the bitcoin network currently sits at 101.9 tera hashes the last time the network saw a hash rate that low was at the beginning of june 2020 here's a visual it does not look pretty <laughs> okay <laughs> But I know what you're thinking. Wow, this is very scary. You know, the hash rate. Oh, my God. Mining death spiral. Well, Satoshi planned for that. And he planned for that with the difficulty adjustment. Here's the Clark Moody dashboard. The next difficulty adjustment right now, this could change. I suspect that it's going to be 30% by the time we get to July 2nd. This is the biggest difficulty adjustment Bitcoin has had in its history. Okay. Why Why did it adjust this much? Well, a nation state, I, 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 I said it very well in this tweet, so I'm not going to try saying it again. Let me just read this tweet. <laughs> China bans most mining within its borders. 50% of the hash rate dropped. Bitcoin kept working like nothing happened. And these miners are packing up, going to where they are treated best, further decentralizing the hash rate in the process. You can't stop the honey badger. And the difficulty adjustment is the incentive, right? Because now if you had an obsolete miner, like an M3, right? Or like the S9, especially if you if you have expensive electricity costs, right? Now all of a sudden you could plug those babies back in, right? Because the difficulty of mining Bitcoin is about to drop 25 to 30%. I suspect it's going to be closer to 30% soon, as soon as we get closer to July 2nd. Now check this out, Phil, right? Again, I want to focus on this, this, I want to focus on what happened, okay? A nation state, right? A nation state, one of the most powerful countries in the world just banned Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin kept working like nothing happened. And the only thing that actually happened, right, was that the blocks have been a little bit longer until July 2nd. Then they're going to go back to where they were before. So if that doesn't show you the decentralization of Bitcoin, if that doesn't kill the China FUD, if that doesn't kill the narrative that Bitcoin is centralized and blah, 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 you're effing blind, bro. Okay. Bitcoin just survived an attack from China. That's the way that I see it. And you know who's going to benefit from this? You know who's going to benefit from this? Bitcoin. Bitcoin, right? Because it's further being decentralized. And you know what? Those miners have a lot of money and they're packing up. Look at all those S9s. Look at those, all those beautiful, beautiful S9s. They're packing up and they're getting ready to be deployed elsewhere. But where are they getting deployed? El Salvador, baby. Volcano, volcano mining. Where else are they getting deployed? Chinese crackdown leads Bitcoin miners to Texas and Florida. Woohoo! Where else are they getting deployed? Kazakhstan. So in the process of China shooting themselves in the foot, right, for whatever reason, kicking, you know, Bitcoin mining out of the country, I think it's going to cost them trillions of dollars in the long run, right? They're they're decentralizing Bitcoin in the process and making it stronger. Fucking Satoshi, dude, you're a fucking genius or girl. I don't know. But Jesus, man, it's just like. It's like you see it as negative news on the on the outside. 50% hash rate drop. But like I said in my tweet, it's a good thing because it's just going to decentralize the hash rate. Right. So look, in the short term, I think what Phil was saying earlier, this might have been the cause of that huge crash. Uh, what Phil was saying earlier, we don't know. We don't like to speculate. But again, what doesn't kill Bitcoin 
makes it stronger. And that's exactly what this is. Phil. So what I what I think is uh, what I think is really interesting is that dictatorships seem to have a a knack for like, you know, kind of like putting themselves into their own prison. You know, it's like they want all this power. So what they're going to do is take themselves out of, you know, the one of the most lucrative markets the history has ever seen. And <clears throat> hold on, fiat gains aside and all that garbage stuff aside, we're, we're talking about freedom enabling technology. We're talking about technology that is completely changing the way that we transact. They are completely taking themselves out of it. And let's be honest, we know that they're going to sit there and set up CBDCs, right? Or CDBCs. I always get the D and the B backwards. But um, slave, so just call it slavery money, dude. It's yeah, exactly. It, it's just digital slave money anyways. But so they're going to sit there and they're going to prop up their own absolute garbage, which is going to be a pale imitation, right, of the one true king. What's the point? And, and it's just pointless. Like these, hey, look, you know what? We're not complaining. <laughs> we're not complaining. Dude. Well, at first we were, but then we were like, hey, wait a second. You know, it's like once you actually stop and take a look, it's like, this is actually really good. You're You're kind of screwing yourself here, bud. Yep. <laughs> Dude, and it's beautiful, man. That that it just goes to show, right, how beautifully built the incentive structure of Bitcoin is, mm -hmm. right? And that's what the difficulty adjustment is going to represent, right? The largest in history, right, which means that the incentive to plug in that old miner, right? The incentive to go back to mining, right? It's going to be huge, right? And that's what it that's what it's meant to do. Right. So it's just beautiful, man. It's it's mm -hmm. beautiful. But listen, so some, some negative news for today. Not good news. Let's check it out. Self crowns Bitcoin investment inventor wins lawsuit over white paper copyright claim. Right. Uh, let's let's hear it from the horse's mouth himself. Uh, Cobra, which was this was it was the lawsuit against Cobra. Cobra is currently the owner of Bitcoin.org, and it was to take down the Bitcoin white paper. And apparently Craig Wright won the lawsuit by default. But what Cobra had to say, I think, is the most important thing. So let me read his tweet. All your fiat based assets are ultimately secured by the same legal system that today made it illegal for me to host the Bitcoin white paper because a notorious liar swore before a judge that he's Satoshi. I highlighted the important part. A system where justice depends on who's got the bigger wallet. <coughs> Proof of stake. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, sorry, I got a cough attack. Um a system where justice depends on who's got the bigger wallet. I don't think you could get a beggar, a better advertisement of why Bitcoin is necessary than what happened today. Rules enforced through cryptography are far more superior than rules on whoever can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in court. And this is exactly why the Bitcoiners are against proof of stake. And this is exactly why we are for proof of work, because in a proof of work system, doesn't matter how powerful you are. You're the emperor of who you're the emperor of whatever country you want to call it. Right. You still have to spend the same amount of electricity as the other guy in the eyes of the Bitcoin network. It doesn't matter whether you have a million Bitcoin or whether you have one Bitcoin, you have the same amount of power, right? And a proof of stake system, which is exactly what Cobra was just talking about, right? Things like that happen, right? People that hold the most amount of coins, right? In this case, fiat, have more influence over the system, right? So, so two things. I think it's absolutely absurd that Craig Wright, even though he's been proved to be a liar, uh, a, a Florida state, uh, a Florida court magistrate literally signed that that Craig Wright committed perjury. It's absolutely absurd that a British court is still buying into this guy's bullshit and that Craig Wright won by default because uh, Cobra didn't want to fucking reveal his his uh, his 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 identity. Like, you, you see how absurd this is? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's 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 insane. He didn't right? want to dox himself, so so that that's the excuse. That, that that essentially that's what Calvin and and Craig are using against him, right? That that you know it's like oh well you know if you would show up and be a man, 
you know, and it's like you realize that all they're trying to do is get him to come out of the woodwork so they can start their stupid harassment campaigns. The same harassment campaigns that they did to Hoddle and not. Yes. Okay. So these guys, the, these guys are very dangerous. You know, like they're, they're, it's not, they're not sitting there to figure shit out in the, in, in, in the courts. Okay. Like that, that is all just a show. It's all smoke and mirrors. What they're trying to do is to draw these people out so that they can harass them. Yes. They that's want it. They're taking advantage of the fiat system. Because that's, that's right. That's what it is to go after Bitcoiners. Yep. Okay. That's what they're doing. Okay. Craig Wright is an enemy of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. He's a fraud. This guy is dangerous. And man, it, it look, Arthur Van Pelt, man, does a very good job. If, if you don't want, if you don't believe us, go, go follow his account. Go yep. do your own research. And at my legacy same, kit. At my legacy kit. We'll mm -hmm. pop it up. Check this out, Phil, to end the news segment on some bullish news, actual oh, bullish news. And I'm going to enable the sound this time because I never do. do okay, check this out. Tweet by Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor, if you are hoping to preserve your wealth for a generation, Ricardo B. Salinas was one of the wealthiest men in Mexico, suggests you invest in Bitcoin. The strategy is simple. Choose the highest quality asset you could find and hodl. Shout out to Pomp for uh, posting the video. Thank you, Pomp. Okay. So let me play this. Yo sí le he metido mucho tiempo, mucho estudio y I put a lot of time into Bitcoin. Activo, I think it's an asset que, que debe de estar en el portafolio that de should be in the part of every investor. Es un activo que tiene valor. It's valor an asset that has value, has international value. Con enorme liquidez you a could, nivel mundial. You could sell it and buy it y que por eso debería estar en cualquier portafolio. Lo finito de Bitcoin, los 21 millones, es la clave de todo el tema. Por eso decía yo lo de Ethereum, ¿no? Que mientras no tenga un, una cantidad finita de emisión, no creo nada. Si se le parece tu, tu activo, ¿no? Sí. Es el fiat, es un fraude. <laughs> Fiat is a fraud. Yo crecí, empecé mi carrera profesional en 81. I started el peso in 1981. estaba a 20 por uno. The Hoy Mexican estamos peso a 20 mil por uno. So, today we're at 20,000 to one. A mí no me cuente. Don't tell me. Y eso es aquí en México, pero si lo hacemos en Venezuela o en Argentina o en that's Zimbabue. That's not only in Mexico, sí. that's in Venezuela, that's Argentina, that's in Zimbabue. Entonces, el fraude the same del pattern. fiat es una cosa of fiat. inherente al sistema fiat. Y lo estamos viendo ahorita suceder en Estados Unidos. La emisión monetaria se fue a la luna, ¿me entiendes? Entonces el dólar... So, so, you get the point, okay? And I tried to translate so things wouldn't get lost in translation, which happens a lot when you see the little text up top. All right, so you got the text up top and you got the Nico translation. But the point is, okay, fiat is a fraud. And the guy called it as a fraud and he says it. It's not only... You're not only seeing this in Mexico, you're seeing this all over the world. And now you're starting to see it in uh now you're starting to see in the u.s but my favorite part phil <laughs> he said it he's like the most important part is that there's only 21 million and if you compare that to ethereum there's not so <laughs> why the hell would you buy ethereum <laughs> but you see and like this is the, the this is the funny part right you got a guy like this that sits down far away from the noise looks at the data and comes to this conclusion on his own yes that, I, I mean, that's incredibly powerful. And not only that, but this guy's not a millennial. He's not a Gen Xer. He looks like a boomer. He is a boomer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like this, I, man, I, I got to applaud him. You know, like the, this guy has already made millions in fiat. He already has the garbage money and he doesn't even want it. He sees it for what it is. He sees man. it for what it is. And he also, and you know what? At the same time, he's also thinking about his family and his future, Right. And preserving the and preserving the wealth going forward. Absolutely, you know. But, but dude, that or I, the, the preserving the ability to transfer value. Yep. Transact to transfer value. It, dude, it, 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 the idea of Bitcoin is starting that, and I and I say idea on purpose, right? The idea of this twenty-one million, you know, the idea that no one controls it, the idea of self-sovereignty, right, is starting to spread throughout the world. And it's doing it a lot quicker, Phil, than we expected, right? Mm -hmm. We thought that a country was, you know, going to adopt Bitcoin in the next epoch, right? But yeah. it happened this epoch, right? And it looks like it's metastasizing all over Latin America. I've heard it on very, very good sources that Paraguay is like very, very, it's going to follow El Salvador very quickly. 
And man, after that, all bets are off. Okay, all bets are off because in the World Bank's own charter, okay, in their own charter, it says that they must accept all foreign currency. <laughs> so, man, listen, uh, this is exciting. This is awesome. And I'm very glad to hold Bitcoin through these times of we're witnessing, man, the the death of slavery, a.k.a. central banking. And hopefully uh, we're witnessing the birth of a new age of freedom, the likes of which mankind has never seen before. Phil? Bullish. <laughs> bullish, right? That's it, man. That's all I got for you. For that. <laughs> what else could you say, dude? I mean, just it's just bullish. bullish, man. Like this guy comes out, calls Ethereum, you know, calls ETH a fraud, tells everyone that fiat's fake and a fraud. I mean, like, you kidding me? Everyone Dude. hates this guy right now. The mainstream system is like, no, what are you doing? It's 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 breaking down. Steve Hankey is having a panic attack, oh, right? Steve Hankey. Fuck that dude. Fuck that what guy. What the hell? Fuck that guy. What is wrong with this guy? Like this weekend, man, I swear they sat there and they they, they reanimated him. You know, another troll falls out of the garbage dump. Dude, <laughs> I have so many Go and things. Don't pollute the Bitcoin waters. <laughs> I swear to God, man, these people, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I picture it in my head. They, they literally they roll out of the garbage dump and they put out these tweets. And don't worry, guys, we're going to cover it tomorrow. We're going to cover <laughs> yeah. all. Don't worry, I've got fiat, it all. All the fiat propaganda, right, that's coming out. They're freaking out. They're having a meltdown. We're all going to cover it on tomorrow's episode. But today, Phil, there was a software release today. Why didn't you tell everybody about it? software releases all right it looks like we've got for the software releases we've got a uh an update for a bitcoin wallet it is sparrow wallet version 1.4.2 that was released and that's down below in the show notes awesome thank you phil all right guys that was our show if you enjoyed the show you know what to do smash that like button smash that smash that it's the beginning of the week so i got a lot of energy and uh, of course if you want to continue hearing the news from the bitcoin perspective and the catastrophic fiat and shitcoin fails, definitely consider subscribing. And we will see you tomorrow for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. Fiat's a fraud. Bye.